Now to our Pioneer Award and, and a lady I've gotten to know over the years, Major Retired Mickey Colton. And when we attempt to define the term Pioneer, we understandably think of blazing new trails, overcoming obstacles others have found insurmount insurmountable, and setting the foundation for those who will follow. Major Mickey Colton fulfills each of these criteria, and then some. Mickey was born in Kitchener, Ontario. As a child and teenager, she demonstrated little interest in the military, but she did have a love for flying. She clipped coupons from a magazine and cashed them in for free flying lessons. Eventually, prompted by a friend, she decided to apply to the RCAF and was surprised when the recruitment officer told her she was his first female pilot recruit. She had timed her application well, entering the RCAF only a few weeks after the Canadian Forces first started accepting female civilian recruits in their pilot program and became a member of the third group of Canadian female military pilots in training in Canadian history. Mickey received her pilot's wings in 1982 and spent most of her time in the military as a search and rescue or SAR, SAR pilot, operating the venerable C-130 Hercules aircraft. During her tenure in the Canadian Armed Forces, Mickey served in a variety of squadrons in various parts of the country. 436 Squadron in Trenton, 429 Squadron in Winnipeg, 435 Squadron Edmonton, back in Trenton at 424 Squadron, and 426 Squadron, where she served two, tier, two tours as flying instructor. She was posted to the C-130 Standards and Evaluation Office at Transport and Rescue Evaluation Team and served two tours in this position due to her exceptional flying skills and her attention to detail. This position involved ensuring that pilots that were upgrading to aircraft captain met this high standard before they were awarded their AC category. It was during this period that Mickey became the first Canadian woman to log 5,000 hours on the C-130. And in 1997, she was promoted to the rank of Major. In 2003, Mickey deployed for six months to Eindhoven, the Netherlands, in support of Canadian troops moving in and out of Afghanistan. In 2008, she was selected to be the sole pilot on a Canadian Forces transition team deployed to Botswana to assist in the induction of women pilots into the country's Air Force. The following year, Mickey was honoured as one of 100 Canadians who have made significant contributions to Canada's aviation history by having her name painted on the fuselage of the 100 Years of Flight commemorative CF-18 Hornet. It was a singular distinction. And over the years, Mickey has been a much requested member of the RCAF Speakers Bureau, presenting at high schools, women's and business clubs, where she's continued to promote careers in the military, with particular emphasis on those for women. Mickey has been a constant presence and occasional speaker at numerous women in aviation conferences within North America. In 2015, once again, she demonstrated her leadership and commitment to the growth and support of female Canadian aviators as co-organizer of the highly successful 13th, 13th Canadian Women in Aviation Conference held in Toronto. In October 2011, Mickey retired from the Air Force after 32 years of service with over 7,000 hours, principally in the C-130. The next day, she joined the Air Force Reserves and continues, she continues to be a leader at 424 Tra Transport and Rescue Squadron as duty operations officer, ensuring the crews get the support they need to successfully execute the unit's search and rescue mandate. In 2016, Mickey coordinated the retirement of the squadron's E-model Hercules, ensuring the aircraft's final flight and arrival ceremony at the Canadian Aviation and Space Museum in Ottawa was commensurate with the 51 years the aircraft had been in service. And this past year, Mickey demonstrated once again her dedication to aviation in Canada by volunteering as treasurer for the Canadian Women in Aviation Conference held in June in Calgary, Alberta. Mickey lives in Trenton, Ontario, with her husband of 29 years, Chris, retired RCAF colonel. And when she's not piloting a Hercules around the sky, she loves to, Julie loves to lead her 11-year-old warm-blood Henry, 
through his dressage routines. Mickey and her daughter Erin share Henry, while Riley, a 24-year-old warm blood, is Mickey's retired show horse. Not only has Mickey overcome the obstacles women faced at a time in forging a career in the historically male-oriented field of aviation, she has done so within the military, an environment at the time almost exclusively dominated by men. As one of the initial cadre of female pilots in the RCAF, she has blazed a path for future generations of women pilots. Her courage and determination to succeed as a military pilot, regardless of the obstacles placed in front of her, have clearly established her as a classic role model for others to follow. And it is with such great pleasure we present this year's Northern Lights Pioneer Award to Major Mickey Colton. And presenting her trophy, is Major Retired Deanna Brasseur, 2017 Elsie Award winner in the Pioneer category. Well, it's really hard to be on the stage with so many underachievers. <laughs> <laughs> I am blown away. I really, really am. I, uh, thank you, Joy and, uh, and Jackie and uh, the members of the board of the Northern Lights Foundation for this, my family, my friends, uh, honored guests. Um, being given an award uh, like this is, is, an, is an absolutely awesome thing. In 2015, I got to be a judge for this event, so I know the pedigrees of the women behind me and, and how amazing they are. And uh, getting an award from your peers is really the highest accolade of all. At this point, I would kind of liken it to the Oscar of aviation. So I should probably be holding it and go, you like me, you really like me. <laughs> but in truth, I am, I am very humbled and I am very grateful to have been nominated for this award by my favorite search and rescue squadron 424 and to receive the Elsie. The Els Elsie McGill was a woman of drive and of determination and of courage. And that those attributes are demonstrated so beautifully by, by the women in this room. I am empowered by everyone here. And I know that the future of aviation uh, in Canada is in very good hands and feet. So <laughs> I'm very happy to see that uh, come to pass in the future. Be feeling like a pioneer makes you think you should be in a museum. Oh, wait, never mind. That's, that's, that's happened. So. Um, in the, in the late 70s, my mom had a poster, one of those inspirational posters you know you see on walls, and, and it said, there are two gifts we can give our children. One are, is roots, and the other is wings. And I was so enamored of that, that last year my daughter Erin was able to talk me into getting an eagle wing tattooed on my shoulder, the, my very first one. Mine says, um, I forget, what does it say, Erin? I never see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's on my shoulder. <laughs> Actually, mine says I gave her wings, and and Erin's has a matching one, and it says she taught me to fly. Yeah, I know, isn't it cute? It's really, I mean, it's, it's really cute. Thank you. So at this point, I think what I'd like to say to my mom is, Mom, thank you for the roots, and thank you for the wings, and thank you all for the privilege of this this honor tonight. Thank you again. Thank you. 